And our co-hosts for this morning, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Good morning, sir. Retired safety engineer and firefighter, although the firefighter part was volunteer, correct? Correct. Yes, yeah, not a paid vol- uh, not a paid firefighter. Nevertheless, you did retire from that. I did. Yeah. You were an EMT before that. Correct. Well, same time, firefighter, EMT. Then you we were a baseball did, player. We did it all. And you were, you were a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> you were an astronaut and all, all that other kind of stuff. I was a rocket scientist, but that was different. My next door neighbor's father was a rocket scientist at NASA. A lot of pressure on the kids after that one. I bet. Yeah. Now he just, he retired to teach at MIT and he's like 89 years old, still teaching at MIT as a side job. Also, let's welcome in uh, Matt Harvey, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney with absolutely no jurisdictional prudence here in this area. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Good to be here. Early voting continues throughout the rest of uh, this week and uh, Saturday. Saturday, the hours are just a little bit different. Amended to 9 to 5 Saturday. It's 8 to 5 uh, today and tomorrow. And the numbers have been pretty enthusiastic, uh, Mr. Harvey. They have. They have big turnouts uh, from what I'm hearing across the state as well. Uh, But I wanted to talk about a little something different. If you're not able to early vote, the law, as it's currently written, it's West Virginia Code 3-1-42. Again, that's 3-1-42. Allows for uh, an employee, if they need time off on Election Day to go vote, upon written request to their employer, three days notice, uh, they can without penalty, as it says, which means they cannot deduct your wage or, or fire you or anything like that. Uh, you can have up to three hours to go and vote, which is pretty neat. Cause I, and I was reminded of that. Mm-hmm. I made a post about this probably a uh, couple, probably back in 2022 during that election. But there was a guest on talking about making Election Day a holiday. Yes. And, and you know, the, and the, I, I assumed that the intent of that was to ensure that people have opportunities uh, to go vote and this 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 is a very old law but it's still on the books and it does provide that that you that you know you can without penalty you, you, so you cannot use your job as an excuse to, to not vote mm-hmm. plus now with yeah. early voting that was delegate rick hillenbrand back yeah. on october 18 he had made that uh declaration well, that he'd like to afloat a bill like that and and the government's already for the most part a lot of the government services are already closed on election day because they utilize schools a lot for mm-hmm. polling places and the courthouse to count the vote so a lot of government services are already cut down or shut down so i, I don't you know you're talking about private employers that this provision re- allows for that and now if you're and they have the list of what are essential employees if it's um infeasible unfeasible for the employer to allow if it's like um health care services then they have to create a, sort of a, a rotation that gives the employees slots of time to go vote so it's it's pretty good yeah, it's well, pretty good so as a practical matter if you need to submit written notice three days in advance today is the last day to do that right to, i would do it today or tomorrow but tuesday is the actual day so friday so it, monday tuesday you know, is it calendar days or, or well work days? i i, I would <laughs> It doesn't. Come spe- on, you brought this. It up. doesn't <laughs> specify. I would. I would. I would argue that it is business days. Okay. That would seem to make the most sense. Yeah, that would seem to be, make the most sense. So yeah. t- today or tomorrow, get it in. I just remember to turn your clocks back one hour. If you still have a clock, you have to manually set in your home because on is that this weekend? So, yes, it is. Ooh. Saturday night, overnight into Sunday. You have morning. to get up at two o'clock and set your clock back under penalty of law. Don't tear off that mattress tag and don't cheat the t- the, t- the clock turn back. Our guests in this segment from Build Up Berkeley, Jennifer Smith. Jen, good morning to you. Good morning. Good to have you back. Thank you for having me. Kevin Starlipper as well. Kevin, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You and Harvey are tied for best dressed people in the studio right now. He yeah. No, he wins. Although, you know, Jen's outfit is good too. Me and Gilstrap are very casual. Very casual. Yeah. We, that, yeah, I won't. Yeah. Some... Among the people who are well dressed here, one of them is wearing blue jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it is Halloween, and yes. he does have green. I, I did orange, orange, orange tie. This Good is point. It is festive. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Build Up Berkeley because uh, Gilstrap said he's already seen people milling around. What was it you said you drove by and you saw a big crowd of people? Um, for, the, for the barbecue thing? Yeah. The, the um, What's the name of the barbecue? Oakwood Barbecue. Uh, Oakwood Barbecue. And. They're open every other weekend, and, and we get the hankering for it always on the weekend that it's that it's not open. So we were driving down actually to go vote um, last Saturday mm-hmm. at, in uh, in Bennington, and 
like all of Berkeley County was gathered at this this barbecue place. It was packed. Yes. So, so they used to only be open on Sundays. Now they're open on Saturdays as well. I, I do believe they had like a Chinese um, theme for that Saturday that it, and it was a great turnout for them. Um, so they're doing very well. Um, actually, J.C. Henson is one of our judges this year for um, the Build Up Berkeley program. Very nice. And you brought us some uh, refreshments, as they say, here with some donuts. So these are uh, kind of fall themed donuts, too. Where did you get these? I got those at Oars. So you can't go wrong with the apple cider <laughs> donuts. They're yeah. very delicious. Apple cider cake donuts. Yes. Best diffused by November 3, so you know they're fresh. So they're good for you because it's apple. <laughs> it's, it's a fruit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An apple a day. Apple donut a day, yeah. Those are p- penalty-free donuts, right? Absolutely. And let's talk about Build Up Berkeley and what it is and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So Build Up Berkeley, we are actually in our second year. Um, um, it is an opportunity for entrepreneurs of all walks of life to have an opportunity to win cash money for their business. Um, they started the program. They had to send in a 90-second pitch. That 90 second pitch was reviewed by a panel of judges to then enter the competition. We do have eight participants or eight finalists that are competing. Um, They did have to attend educational sessions and um, Kevin Starlipper was actually one of the um, educators as well. Um, So they're learning about banking and legal and everything there is to know about um, business, um, how to set up a business, um, HR, um, insurance, um, making sure that, like I said, they have all the resources to Mm -hmm. um, make their business grow. And they also, during the educational sessions, they are paired with mentors as well. So we have some good mentors. Jim Lindsenmeyer, Donna Van Meter, Carol Goolsby, and Tyler Cobb. And Tyler Cobb was actually a winner last year as well um, in the Build Up Berkeley pitch competition. So he has Cloud Nine um, events. Um, so great program. And these mentors, they will have for as long as um, you know they continue to reach out to one another. So we feel like even if they don't win the grand prize at the end, they still have the education behind um, behind them now. Um, they also had to develop a business plan as a part of the educational sessions. Um, and we worked very closely and partnered with Blue Ridge Community and Technical College. Um, And Tiffany Hine was instrumental in helping them create their business plan. They did have to submit their business plan. And if they did submit their business plan, they also get college credit as well for completing the classes and submitting their business plan. Um, So tomorrow night is actual pitch night. Um, where they will be presenting on stage at 5 p.m. It is open to the public, and um, I encourage and welcome everyone to join us. Um, So what happens is, so the business plan scores as well as the pitch night scores will then be combined together, um, as well as classes were, um, I I don't want to say graded, but if you missed a class, then you are deducted five points from your score. So um, attendance was encouraged, and like I said, all the scores will then be combined, um, and then the winner will be announced tomorrow. Um, We also have a people's pick as well that is currently going on. It does close tomorrow at 4 p.m., and that is where the participants can share the information and about their business where Anyone in the community can pick who they would like to see um, when um, and what business they like the best. So the People's Pick um, is a separate award, um, and they are awarded $1,000 for that. Did the barbecue guy win the People's Pick one year? Yes. Well, so last year they won the grand prize plus the People's Pick. Double. That's pretty impressive. Right. Uh, You mentioned the word business plan, two words technically, right? So what goes into a properly constructed business plan that uh, passes review here? It is a lot of information. So there was a... a two classes actually that Tiffany Hine had gone over just to go over the business plan where they need an introduction, cover letter, executive summary, their financials, the marketing plan, a lot of information about the business. Um, So it's very, very detailed. Um, I will say some that we received are about almost 40 pages 
um, long. Um, so the judges also review the business plans as well, and they are all scored um, and so the business plan would be something that they would submit to a bank, say, for financing? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so that is required, and Kevin can probably talk a little bit about that. Um, the business plan, we felt like, is very important because if they would want a loan or um, a business plan is something, and financials are really important that the bank is going to want to see. Uh, absolutely. Um, whenever I look at uh, businesses uh, coming in wanting – uh, wanting loans, I, I like to see that they've really thought about what they're going to do. Uh, most of the time that they, they have it in their head, but they haven't put it down on paper. Uh, by putting it down on paper, it gives them a roadmap. Uh, and I always encourage them, you know, six months, a year into the business, go back and look at it and, and see what adjustments uh, you need to make. Um, again, it, it is a, a roadmap. It, it's not something that they have to follow completely. Uh, but it gives them a great guide uh, and if they take the time uh, to put that down and, and give it to you know a, a bank professional um, between the two of them and, and with the legal and, and with the CPA usually they can come up with a pretty good plan and, and succeed and that's what the mentoring is is done during the the, the process yes. of this because it's interesting I'm at your, your website here and it wildly divergent businesses from window tinting to collectibles to restaurant tours to travel agent um, it's really it's, it, it's all over the board so yes. I would think from a judge's point of view you got apples and oranges and pineapples the the, the, the comparison has to be very difficult so what are you comparing actually is it just the it's to me so part of the scoring a lot of it was based on content and making sure did they include this content in their um, project as well as what kind of businesses do we need in Berkeley County? I feel like that's important and for them to take a look at as they're reviewing everything. More restaurants. There are um, restaurants um, seem to be a, a common theme among this program. Obviously, Oakwood won last year, mm -hmm. and they're doing very well. Um, like I said, their hope is to they all have still have their daytime jobs. Their hope is to eventually do Oakwood barbecue full time, um, and I think they're moving in that direction. So we do have food by fire as well as um, Mama Boyd's will be opening downtown, as well as he's having a speakeasy in the evening. So, um, The location on Warm Springs is still open though, correct? That is correct. Okay. okay. In regards to the marketing aspect of the business plan, uh, Jen or, or uh, um, um, Kevin. Kevin, I've just blanked on you, yeah. like Mr. Starlipper, and I can't remember <laughs> your friend. Uh, what is the, the changes that have uh, to come about in the marketing plan with the popularity of social media now for promoting one's business? Well, okay. I, I'm going to say, so the marketing that I'm seeing in a lot of their plans is y who is your market and who are you marketing to? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, it, social media definitely is probably on the top of the list for marketing at the moment, but I think the target market mm -hmm. and comparing and making sure that your prices um, are set and comparable um, are, are important in that marketing section. Have the judges kept up with that aspect of how much more important social media is in terms of marketing than it was maybe even 10 years ago? I would imagine so. So one of our judges is Diego Lasada, mm -hmm. um, and he obviously has um, the Garage King, which is um, um, newly opened downtown. Um, so he's marketing his um, restaurant and all of the restaurants in there on social media. So I, I definitely know he has a um, an idea of how important social media is. And Mary Beth Blair as mm -hmm. well. She's a marketing professional herself so um, definitely um, I, I think they all see the importance in it um, Michael Walton is also another judge from the Community Foundation now retired mm -hmm. um, JC Henson I mentioned um, I be do believe he does a lot of stuff word-of-mouth but he does social media as well and then um, Sharmika Brooks is another judge how many of these folks a year after are still pursuing their business dream. Any idea? Is there follow-up that way? 
Yes. So we followed up with everyone after the competition and still stay in touch. Um, obviously, um, Cloud9 is still going strong. We're actually having an after party for the participants. Um, they're working now with the Shenandoah um, Hotel, and they even have their own location on Queen Street. So they are um, going strong. Oakwood Barbecue is um, obviously expanding. And then there were some other ones um, that had gone in different directions where um, there was a lot of, there was one particular business who um, they were recommending possibly, um, you know, maybe the for-profit side is not for you, your business, um, maybe you should be a nonprofit and go in that direction. So the judges last year were coaching them on and trying to assist them. Um, Shuggy Max was another mm -hmm. one. Um, Shuggy Max, um, she has amazing, um, sh now she sells food and macaroons and um, desserts as well. And I did try to go in and get some macaroons from her to share with you guys, but she is not open <laughs> on Wednesdays. But um, so please go check her out. She now has a brick and mortar in Hedgesville. Mm -hmm. um, so she is doing very well. Rob just made a mental note not to schedule you on Thursdays anymore. <laughs> move it, move it up a day or back a day so no, you get so was, you get the macaroons. My my honest thought was that was very nice of you to even think of us uh, in that way. That, um, that's pretty cool. Obviously, my wife made some macaroons about a month ago, and I had like two weeks supply of macaroons. So I'm, I'm okay. If you missed the macaroons today, I was okay with that. I was kind of macarooned out anyway. Okay, but it was tasty. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the homemade macaroon, and you know, you, with the macaroons, you got to be. There's a skill to that because yes. it, you you don't want a flat macaroon. You, you know you got to get they have to rise a little bit. You know it's and it's not easy. No, I know that she bakes them for multiple occasions, and I do think she does them for the apple harvest as well. Okay, very nice. So, um, yeah, she's definitely growing in her business. What can the legislature do to help small businesses in West Virginia, Kevin or Jen, either one of you, if you're thinking about something that needs to be adjusted a bit? Well, I think that's where we came in. Um, you know, there's a lot of resources for larger um, manufacturing businesses, not a whole lot for small businesses. Um, and there is the SBA and things where they can get um, loans and things like that, but a lot of businesses don't want loans um, and they don't have the financial backing at, at from the start to um, – achieve what they want so that's why we started the build up berkeley program to give them a little push to assist them in their in their goals i, I agree and i think one thing um that that maybe we're missing is uh, that the education component in in public schools just um talking about business um not, not everyone is is going to go to college uh and, and talking about how do you you know what? What's the next step after high school, and, and how can you prepare and train for that? So, um, I, I think it starts that soon to be thinking about being your own own boss. Is there any business curriculum in the schools now, or is that part of something you could get? A, a, does Rumsey offer a, a business uh, sort of? I will minor? say I, I do have three kids. Um, one is currently in college, and one's in high school, and one's in middle school. And I do know that you can take electives. Um, if you so choose um, for business related um, classes, but they are electives, they're not required. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something, I know the bank also goes in um, to some of the schools on a occasion as well, so. What we do try to provide some financial literacy to, um, uh, to school age um, uh, children, yes, absolutely. Financial literacy overall in the country is relatively low anyway, and, and many people cite the fact that they didn't have those kind of classes when they were in high school or uh, even taking a few in college or whatever. And you know, if, you're in, if you're a high school teacher or whatever, administrator, you, you've already got a lot of regulations and restrictions federally on what you have to teach and how many hours you have to do this or, or that or whatever. So it's, it's a lot of pressure on them to get all the other stuff in. But it certainly would be helpful if at least the majority of our population had some exposure to business type classes. I, I know, and I'm showing my age. Uh, whenever I was in high school, we actually, I think it was in a democracy class, but we uh, we was taught how to properly write a check out and, right. and keep a check register. Uh, I mean, my, my son's 24. He's never written a check in his life. Uh, it's just. And he won't. Yeah, and he won't. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. 
or yeah. the art of counting change. Yeah, exactly. Just, you know, without having the display up top, actually counting the when change. When was the last time you heard somebody's pockets <coughs> jingle with change, right? Well, my, it goes into a tray in my house. But what, So you must you must use a lot of cash then because I otherwise... I use a lot of cash, but I hate... I don't like well, change. Well, you would use a lot of cash, but the rest of us... Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, but I mean, it just the... If you if you if you give the guy at McDonald's, you know the 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 money, and then you give him the extra penny, and you watch the vapor lock that. happen, that they don't really know how to sure how to work that out. Yeah. I do want to mention that uh, part of Build Up Berkeley. So last year there was a lot of um, obviously we only accept a certain amount of people into the competition. Mm -hmm. We did start um, Boost Berkeley, which is a spinoff from Build Up Berkeley that now we're offering the same classes that are, were only offered to the finalists. So we're now doing, um, still partnering with Blue Ridge. Um, and I wanna say they're held quarterly. Leslie Gant is responsible for that program. So we will be hosting the legal and marketing classes um, and everything to help continue the, the education piece. Um, and that is open to everyone. So you can find out more information um, when we do that on our social media. So where does the funding come from for the prizes? That is exactly, a, that is a very good question. And we wouldn't be able to do this without our um, platinum sponsor. Um, so CMB Bank was um, graciously um, supporting us last year as well as this year. Um, so all of our funding does come from sponsorships. So um, we, like I said, we wouldn't be able to do this without our sponsors. And we greatly appreciate CMB Bank for their um, donation so that CMB Bank will be giving out their the grand prize of ten thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, and, and we're, we're a community bank, and and you know local does matter. So we uh, we kind of put our money where our mouth is. You know, we we say local matters. We want to support the local uh, local businesses. Uh, the Development Authority has been a fantastic organization. Uh, I think this is a great idea, uh, and hopefully it will continue for many years, and we can continue to be the sponsor. Kevin, will that be in the form of a check, and will you be relying on your son to write that check <laughs> yeah. yourself? I don't know if he's going to write that check, but uh, it will be in the form of a check. Yes, sir. One of those great big ones. One, one of the great big ones. Ceremonial mm -hmm. check? Yeah. Venmo yeah. will never compete with the big, the big ceremonial check. It's, the, the big check you can get a photograph with. An app on your phone doesn't make for much of a photograph. Right. Right. Hey, I've got 60 seconds left. Could you give us a good summary here, Jen? Yeah, absolutely. So tomorrow night at the Apollo, 5 p.m., free of charge. Please join us. You're going to hear some great presentations. Um, we welcome everyone to attend. And also, uh, we are going to continue this program for next year. So the date will be posted and announced um, tomorrow night for next year. We want everyone in Berkeley County to know that we are here to support you. Um, so entrepreneurs of all kinds, we appreciate you. And, and great businesses help build up Berkeley County. So thank thank you. you both for coming in. Thank you. Jennifer, Kevin.